Welcome back, folks. Greg Silverman here. Uh, another session of Come Learn With Me. Uh, we are intrepid investors. We seek to go wherever we can to find and take in research. So what we do is every week we put out a lot of um, curated articles and then we monitor what comes back, what people have liked, what they've shared. And then we read with you kind of the top three or four. And then we have special uh, topics that we are researching for our own investment program. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what that is. If you want to know more about our investment function, then you'll have to stick to the end of the video and follow this. There'll be a URL up there and you follow that. Okay, a few shout outs to my beloved South Africa. Thinking of you guys, hang in there with the new variant. I'm sure everything's going to work out fine. And happy Thanksgiving to all my fellow citizens. Okay, here we go. Rising share of US adults are living without a spouse or partner. Oh, okay. Pew Research Center, they do a lot of social research. On key economic outcomes, single adults at prime working age increasingly lag those who are married or cohabitating. As relationships, living arrangements, family life continue to evolve for American adults. Sorry, let's uh, get that into the notes. We do have notes behind below each video, so you can just read the notes much quicker. As relationships, living arrangements, and family life continue to evolve for American adults, rising share are not living with a romantic partner. A new Pew Research Center analysis of census data finds that in 2019, roughly four in 10 adults ages 25 to 54, 38% were unpartnered. That is neither married nor living with a partner. This share is up sharply from 29% in 1990. Men are now more likely than women to be unpartnered, which wasn't the case 30 years ago. Okay. You guys sure know how to pick these interesting articles. All right. The growth in the single population is driven mainly by the decline in marriage. Okay. Uh, maybe it's more about internet dating. Among adults who are at prime working age, at the same time, there's been a rise in the share who are cohabiting. But it hasn't been enough to offset the drop in marriage, hence the overall decline in partnership. The partnered population includes some adults who were previously married, those who separated the divorce or widowed. All of the growth in the unpartnered population since 1990 has come from a rise in the number who have never been married. 1990. Oh, I see. Okay. This trend has broad societal implications, as does the growing gap in well being between partnered and unpartnered adults. Looking across a range of measures of economics and social status, unpartnered partnered adults generally have different, often worse outcomes than those who are married or cohabiting. Cohabiting. Is that how you say it? Cohabiting. This pattern is apparent among both men and women. Unpartnered adults have lower earnings on average than partnered adults and are less likely to be employed or economically independent. They also have lower educational attainment and are more likely to live with their parents. Wow, I mean, this is like a stereotypic of ever. Other research suggests that marrying and cohabiting adults fare better than those who are unpartnered when it comes to some health outcomes. The gaps in economic unpartnered and partnered adults have widened since 99. Among men, the gaps are widening because unpartnered men are faring worse than they were in 1990. Uh, among women, however, the gaps have gone wider because partners, partnered women are faring substantially better than in 1990. The growing gap in economic success between partnered and unpartnered adults may have consequences for single men who would like to eventually find a partner. In 2017, Pew Research Center survey, 71% of US adults said being able to support a family financially is very important for a man to be a good spouse or partner. Similar shares of men and women said this. In contrast, 32% of adults and just 25% of men said this. This is a very important for a woman to be a good Americans, marital and living arrangements have changed considerably over the past 30 years. The share of adults ages 25 to 54 who are currently married fell from 67% in 1990 to 53% in 2019. Wow. While the share, while the share cohabiting more than doubled over the same period, from 4% to 99%. I wonder how they consider a gay marriage. If that 
count that. Okay. The share who have never been married has also grown from 17% to 33%. All of this churn is resulted in a significant increase in the share who are unpartnered. The growth in unpartnered adults have been sharper among men than women. Okay, 1990, men and women aged 20 to 54 were equally likely to be unpartnered, 29% of each group. By 2019, 39% of men were unpartnered compared with 36% of women. In terms of their demographic characteristics, prime working age single adults are somewhat younger than their counterparts who are married or living with a partner. Some adults aged 25 to 54, the median age for those who are unpartnered was in 36. This compares with 40 among partnered adults. Okay. Some may assume that in the median age of first marriage continues to rise. Some may assume, okay, now. Yeah. Unpartnered adults are merely lagging behind rather than foregoing partnership altogether. That might not be the case. Among adults aged 40 to 40, there has been a significant increase in the share who are unpartnered in 1990. There are differences by race and, and ethnicity in the share of prime working age adults who are partnered and unpartnered. Among those aged 25 to 54, 59% of black adults were unpartnered in 2019. This is higher than the share among Hispanics, 38, white, 33, and Asian, 29. For most racial and ethnic groups, men are more likely than women to be unpartnered. The exception is among black adults, where women, 62%, are more likely to be unpartnered than men. Hmm. I find that quite interesting. Partnership status also differs by nativity. Foreign-born adults at prime working age were less likely to be unpartnered in 2019 than their native-born peers. This pattern is apparent among adults of each major racial or ethnic origin. For example, 29% of foreign-born Hispanics adults were single, compared with 46% of native-born Hispanics adults, so Hispanic adults. Some of this difference in partnership status may reflect the foreign-born prime working age adults are older than their native-born counterparts. It's very interesting, folks, but it's like a novel. Let's see if we can't. All right, let's skip through a little bit. I got the whole study over here, right? So we're, on average, unpartnered adults have worse economic outcomes than partnered adults. Unpartnered men are fearing much worse economically than partnered men. I'm, I'm reading this uh, over here. Complete at least 20 cents. Bachelor's degree, are employed, median earning, are financially vulnerable. Outcomes differ for married, cohabitate, unpartnered. About three in 10 unpartnered men are living in their parents' home. Wow. Since 1990, worse outcomes for unpartnered men and better outcomes for partnered women. I thought I read that, I guess, is, let's see, completely, oh, I see. Partnered women are now significantly more educated than single women. Completely bachelor's degree, employed, median salary. Both partnered and unpartnered women are slightly less likely to be living with a child they were in 1990. Both partnered living in parents' home. Partnered and partnered in 2019. 1990, okay. Institutionalized, I don't know what that means. Have a child under. Single men have made only minimal gains in educational and employment earnings of single men have declined. Dang. Good to be a single man. Single men are increasingly living to likely to live in their parents' home. Oh, dang, dang. What does institutionalized mean? Okay. Oh, there's four more pages. So you're more than welcome, as is the case when it comes to living with children. Let's see what the final. Conclusion of this article might be. Oh, that's the. There's really is a study. Yeah. Okay, let's go backwards. Methodology. 
Read acknowledgments. Okay, so there wasn't much more in the article. Well, there you go. Um, very interesting. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Demographics, how they kind of these long term trends under things and how they really do affect things, you know, slowly but surely over time. If you want to know more about our investment function, head on over to this URL. Come say hello. Come learn more about us. Philosophy, process, people. We don't advocate for performance. Sorry, guys. You know that past performance is no guarantee for future performance. All right. Do your due diligence. Greg Silberman, out for now.